Ah, God, I love tea in the morning. Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Jim. I edit photos and thanks for stopping by. In this video today, I am in Luminar 4. And yes, you heard me correctly. I am in Luminar 4, but only for a minute because one of the things I keep hearing about Luminar AI, uh, the question I keep getting is, hey Jim, where is adjustable gradient? So here in Luminar 4, I have this little photo and over on the Pro tab, there's this tool called Adjustable Gradient. And I gotta be honest, I talked about it and used it all the time in my Luminar 4 videos. It's very powerful, it's fantastic, I love it, all those kind of things. You just come in, set your orientation, you can adjust it, I'm not gonna do all that. But it gives you control over the top and the bottom of the photo separately. And as you can see, you can increase or decrease the exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights, also warmth and vibrance. So in this one, I might go into the bottom and just say, hey, it's a little too dark down there. Let's brighten that up a little bit and maybe let's give it a little bit of uh, temperature change and maybe a little bump in vibrance. And, you know, hey, maybe we'll lift the shadows a tiny bit as well. And then we'll go into the top and maybe we'll do something similar, a little bit cooler and a little bit more vibrance and, you know, whatever. This isn't really how I'd edit the photo. I'm just showing you how the tool works, but it gives you the ability to separate the top and the bottom and edit them separately with these six controls. So when Luminar AI came out, people were hopping into the Pro tab and looking for adjustable gradient and not finding it. So I got a lot of questions. Hey Jim, where is adjustable gradient? And the truth is, it's not there. It's gone. Adios, sayonara, no mas. But that's okay because there is now something called local masking. And local masking actually gives you the ability to do the same thing and more. So let me show you that. Click on local masking and click on add and basic. You get a basic local mask. Now the difference here is that you have to apply the mask separately for the top and the bottom because you're isolating those areas. However, you get more controls. In addition to the warmth, the exposure, the contrast, uh, highlights and shadows uh, and vibrance that you had in the other one, you're also getting AI structure and saturation. So it's actually more powerful. So in this case, I would come in with a gradient mask and I would drag it maybe something like that and hit enter. And then I'd come in and just bump up that exposure a little bit, maybe give it a tiny bit of contrast, maybe give it some saturation and vibrance because I like that. Uh, maybe take the warmth up a tiny bit. No, actually I'm gonna go cooler for this one. Um, and the nice thing is I've got AI structure. So what I often do in photos like this is go reduce structure in the sky and water because I like to smooth things out. Well, that's built in. So I can just do that now and just drag that across the bottom of the photo. Now to go do the sky, you do have to create a new gradient mask, but that's quick. Plus add, get a new basic texture, get a new gradient mask, drop it into the sky, something, you know, maybe like that. Again, I'm just kind of winging it here. Uh, and in this case, I think I'll take the exposure down, maybe bump up the shadows a little bit. Once again, smooth it out by dragging exposure to the left, maybe a little bit of bump in saturation and vibrance, and voila, there you go. So I'm able to quickly take something like that, and I took some spots out before I started this video because there were so many in the sky, it was driving me nuts. But there it is before the tool and after. Now it doesn't really match, it needs some work. In fact, I think I'd lift that exposure a little bit in the sky. I think that looks better. But if you compare the two tools, the basic local mask in AI versus the adjustable gradient, you can see here, exposure, contrast, shadows, and highlights. And here it is, exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. And then at the bottom, warmth and vibrance. Well, here's warmth at the top and there's vibrance at the bottom. But again, in addition, you have AI structure and you have saturation. So while it does require you to separately create a mask for the top and the bottom, unlike adjustable gradient, where it would set this orientation and then it would separately adjust each of those within the same use of the tool. In AI, you have to create a separate one for the top and the bottom. However, you have a lot more control over it because you additionally have structure and saturation. So you get additional sliders that you might would need for use in that gradient zone. So that's a quick video. Lots of questions about where's adjustable gradient. And as I said, it's gone, it's not here. But in my opinion, they've actually made it more powerful by allowing us to do this with a gradient mask. And as you saw in my quick demo here, it doesn't really add a lot of time. It's not like, oh gosh, now I gotta go create a new mask and blah, blah, blah. Because it's a gradient, you're just dropping it in. It's a straight line. It covers a huge wide swath of the photo and you're off and running quickly. So that's how you replicate adjustable gradient in Luminar AI using the basic local masking tool with a gradient mask. Hope it helps guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.